Good morning. My name is Bessie Bronstein, and I'm a senior at the Oak Ridge School. As you all know, my primary language is English, but I've been taking Spanish since kindergarten. This year, though, I decided to take French as my foreign language. So all the students here have been taking uh, language since they were young, as per Oak Ridge's command. But I feel like we've sort of lost the enthusiasm that we once had for language after taking it for so many years. I know I did last year, and my Spanish grade can prove that. Um, to sort of refresh this enthusiasm we once held, let's talk about some of the benefits of multilingualism. The main idea that linguists champion is that bilinguals are better at rapidly switching between two tasks. Well, let's think about that. Every time an, a bilingual sees something, they have to pick between two or more words to describe that. That furry household pet might be a cat in English, but it's a shah in French, it's a gato uh, in Spanish, and katza in German. They don't have just one word to describe it. So they have to sit there and think. Their mind has to filter out which word they should be using and pick that language while subduing the second language or third language so that they say the right thing. This linguistic multitasking translates into the ability to handle multiple unrelated ideas at once, and even aids in synthesizing two different concepts into one idea later on. Now, really briefly, I'd like to go over the language centers of the brain to clarify some stuff later. Um, Broca's area and Wernicke's area are highlighted. And Broca's area is in charge of understanding what's going on in a sentence and relaying meaning and comprehension. Uh, while Wernicke's area is associated with mimicking sounds and syntax, it's the words that actually come from your mouth and the sounds that form it and the way your tongue moves to create the patterns. Um, now, children are still developing, so their language centers are more uh, readily shaped and malleable when it comes to language, and they grow more quickly and react more quickly. But that doesn't mean that adults can't learn new languages as they get older. Every time you speak or hear or even understand what, something's being, what something uh, means, your language centers are active. And so every time you learn a new word, you're pretty much learning a new language. It's part of the language you know, but it's new things and new ideas. So if you can learn a new word, you can learn a language. Um, but anyway, there's another advantage I'd like to bring to your attention. A cultural appreciation grows out of learning a language. For example, let's think about the French. They have a reputation for being kind of rude to tourists. But honestly, how many French people, or how many French speakers, go to Paris and then come back saying they were rude? What if you were running a cafe, and people kept coming in, mispronouncing the menu, flagging you down in the middle of your run, uh, taking up your time, and just generally misinterpreting what's going on around them. You'd be annoyed, too. But you don't feel any animosity toward people who come in, talk to you in your language, understand what's happening, and just order their meal and move on with their life. Knowing the language of the country you're in makes you more comfortable there. It allows you to communicate with the locals and get around the city. Instead of the helpless American tourist who expects everything to just come to them because they're there, you're the, you're the visitor who has taken the initiative to learn something new. And that creates a bond between you and whoever you're speaking to. It creates a lot more respect when it comes uh, to communicating. Now, another more practical advantage, perhaps, uh, is the one that comes in the workplace. The most appealing reason when I first took Spanish, uh, picked Spanish as a child, was that I was told that when you're older, so many people will speak Spanish in the States, you might as well learn it. Now, in 2011, there were 52 million Hispanics in the United States. You need to be bilingual. It's always going to help you. There's no time where knowing Spanish won't somehow benefit you, at least in Texas, maybe in Northeast. But uh, my mom's a pediatrician, and most of her patients only speak Spanish. Their English is either broken or just their pronunciation is so poor that it's hard to understand them. And I know that because she can speak their primary language, a lot of them have stayed with her much longer than they should have. And they probably should already be an internist, but for better or for worse, they've stayed with her, and they communicate with her, and perhaps even she can give them be better medical attention because she can communicate with them better. If you go to China and can speak Mandarin to the business representative you're talking with instead of going through a translator, you already have respect. They already respect you, and you're going to gain points with them. Right off the bat, you've made a good impression. If you work at a school and they need teachers to work with ESL students, you have immediate job security if you can speak Spanish to them or whatever language they need. Um, and if you find yourself in Paris, 
You can order your cafe au lait without the waiter rolling his eyes, staring at you, and then walking away and taking 30 minutes for you to get your coffee. Now, Charlemagne said to possess another language is to possess a second soul. Charlemagne spoke some sort of Germanic dialect, Latin, he was fluent in Latin, and may have spoken some Arabic, though those studies are contested. Um, and while you probably won't co create an entire new, entirely new empire with a second language, maybe you'll do something similar. Thank you.